Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us here at The Fountain. My name is John and I will be your host today. Today's lesson is a great reminder that God can do big things through you. You might not always feel ready. You might not feel strong enough, big enough, brave enough, or talented enough. In those times, you can stop and remind yourself that God is with you. You can choose to trust Him and believe that He can work in your life in amazing ways. God can use you no matter what. Maybe that means you'll stand up for the kid who everyone else is picking on. Or maybe you'll take on a project at home that helps your family. Maybe you'll come up with a creative solution for something that's wrong here in our city. There's no limit to what God can do through you when you put your confidence in Him. If there were a theme song for confidence, it will probably be this one. It's called Press Play. It reminds us that Jesus, Jesus loves us and He's with us wherever we go. Get on your feet and let's sing it out loud. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! Oh. We know we belong here Because of your love For us that goes on and on forever Jesus, we know you are with us Wherever we go You're there, we'll always be together So sing along with me For all the joy he brings It's going down Get in the mix We're not stopping Get in the mix I'm Graham, and I'm here to give you a little bit of confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. When you're confident, you don't just sit around waiting for something to happen. No, when there's a game to be played, you get off the bench and play. When there's a challenge to be met, you face it head on. When there's music to be played, you get in the mix, grab an instrument, and make some noise. See what I mean? Confidence. Believe it or not, 
Some people think the triangle isn't that important of an instrument. The band could get along just fine without it. But we know better, don't we? I mean, how else would you know when someone on TV had a good idea? Or how would you know when someone had the right answer on a game show? The answer is the Yangtze River. And of course, who can forget the dinner bell? Come and get it! Sometimes something that doesn't seem important can make a big difference. And in today's story, we'll see how God used someone who didn't think he was important. And that someone's name was... Gideon? Right, Gideon. See you in a bit. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Judges, chapters six through eight. As many times before, the Israelites turned away from God. He allowed the Midianites to take over their land. God's people hid out in caves. When they tried to grow plants or tend to livestock, the Midianites would show up and destroy their crops and animals. At last, the Israelites cried out to God for help. He heard them and sent the angel of the Lord to a man named Gideon, who was threshing grain in a wine press. Mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. All Gideon could do for a moment was stop and stare. Uh, pardon me, sir, you, you said the Lord is with us? Then why has all this happened? The, the Lord has deserted us. You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Uh, pardon me, sir, but how can I possibly save Israel? My family is the weakest in the tribe, and I'm the least important member. I will be with you. Even with a direct message from the Lord, Gideon was still nervous about the whole thing. Uh, give me a special sign. Then I'll know it's really you talking to me. So God gave Gideon a sign, sending fire to burn up meat and bread. God's spirit was with Gideon. And when the Midianites and the Amalekites gathered to attack, Gideon sounded a trumpet for the Israelites to follow but even as the army gathered, Gideon once again pleaded to God for another sign. God responded by letting dew fall on a fleece, and then on the next day, only on the ground surrounding it. Okay. Okay, I've got it. Thank you. At last, Gideon was convinced God wanted to use him. He camped with 32,000 men at the spring of Herod and prepared for battle. Here, God spoke again. I want to hand Midian over to you, but you have too many men. Too many? Israel might brag, my own strength has saved me. Announce to the army, those who tremble with fear can turn back. Gideon did just as the Lord instructed. There, Lord, 22,000 men have gone home. <laughs> Only 10,000 left to fight. There are still too many men. Have you seen the Midianite army? Take the men down to the water. There, I will reduce the number of them for you. Even though it must have worried Gideon to lose more of his army, he did just as the Lord said. Field trip to the lake, everyone. At the water's edge, the Lord said, Some men will drink the way dogs do. They will lap up the water with their tongues. Separate them from those who get down on their knees to drink. Gideon watched carefully. Most men got on their knees and drank directly from the water, but 300 men cupped the water in their hands and lifted them to their mouths to lap. So, God, I send those 300 men home and keep the other 9,700, right? With the help of the 300 men who lapped up the water, I will save you. Let all the other men go home. Oh, um, okay. Yes. Gideon sent home every single person in the army except those 300 men. Get some sleep. Tomorrow we will figure out what's next. That night, the Lord spoke to Gideon once more. Get up. What? 
Oh, uh, I'm awake. Gideon stumbled out of his tent. Below, the campfires and torches of the enemy armies covered the entire valley. So many. Like, like a swarm of locusts. Go down to the camp. Listen to what they are saying. After that, you will not be afraid to attack. Wondering if he might be dreaming, Gideon snuck down the mountain to hover in the shadows at the edge of the camp. He could hear voices from a nearby tent. I had a dream. A round loaf of barley bread came rolling into the camp. It hit the tent with great force and knocked it flat. Wow, but that can only be the sword of Gideon from Israel. God has given him the whole camp. Gideon listened in shock. Wow, God, thank you. At once, Gideon scrambled back up the hill to the Israelite camp. Get up, get up. The Lord has handed the Midianites over to you. Quickly, Gideon separated the 300 men into three groups and handed each one a trumpet and a clay jar with a torch inside. Watch me, do what I do. I'll go to the edge of the enemy camp. Then we'll blow our trumpets from all around the camp and shout, for the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon and his men headed quietly down the slope, fanning out in groups to surround the vast enemy camp. Okay, get ready. As soon as Gideon sounded his trumpet, he smashed his jar so the torch shone brightly. The other 300 men did the same. For the Lord! A sword the Lord! The Israelites held their ground, but their enemies panicked, confused by the trumpets and bright lights that pierced the dark night. They're coming from everywhere! The enemy armies were so confused, they began to fight each other, and then they fled in fear. After the men, Gideon and the Israelites chased their enemies all the way to the Jordan River and beyond until all the enemy armies were destroyed. The Israelites begged Gideon to rule over them. I will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. Yep, Gideon was an underdog, filled with doubt, but he still chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. According to Gideon, he was the least important family member and the weakest family of his tribe. He certainly didn't think God would use him to lead an army to victory over their enemies, but sometimes God uses people who don't seem important to make a big difference. You see this all through the Bible. Think of Jesus. He didn't pick the strongest, smartest, and most holy people to be his 12 closest friends. He picked regular guys fishermen and tax collectors to be his disciples. And they went on to make a huge difference in the world. Hey, maybe that means God can use someone like me too, or someone like you. We don't have to know everything. We don't have to be important. God can do big things through us. Maybe he can use you to help a friend who's having a bad day. Maybe he can use you to solve a problem in your community. Or you might invent something that's never existed before. You might not think you're that important, and you might not think you're ready to make any kind of big difference. But the truth is, God thinks you're important, and he's totally ready to use you for something amazing. That's the one thing to remember today. God can use you no matter what. Knowing that should give you a little confidence. Why is my mouth watering? Oh, must be dinner time. I'll see you around. Gideon was an underdog, to say the least. He didn't really see himself as a hero. He didn't think he was strong enough, brave enough, or important enough to do what God had asked him to do. But in the end, Gideon chose to follow God, and God used him to save the Israelites. Gideon's story shows us that God can use anyone. He can use me, and he can use each one of you. God can use us no matter what. You need to trust God and put your confidence in him. Let's pray and ask God to help us be willing like Gideon so that God can use us too. Dear God, thank you for the story of Gideon. Gideon certainly didn't expect to do something so big, but he was able to do it because he trusted you. We want to be heroes, just like Gideon. We want to be the people to make the wise choice and stand up for what's right. Please help us see ourselves the way you do so that you can use us to make a difference in the world around us. We love you, and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. Be sure to tune in next week and remember to bring a friend.